Welcome to Decades of Horror, the classic era. You promised that night you'd never tell anybody. You finally broke the promise. It was a pledge for life for both of us. I told you if you broke it, I would kill you. You betrayed me. This is episode 118, recorded January 30th, 2022. Magazine. Yippee-ki-yay! I'll leave that last part out. I am your host, Jeff Moore. On this podcast, we cover the good, the bad, maybe even the ugly horror films since the beginning of time through 1969. In each episode, we'll discuss the monster spirit, psychos, and villains that have haunted movie-going audiences since the dawn of film history. Decades of Horror, the classic era, is partnering with Play Now Media and specifically the classic sci-fi movie channel, the classic horror movie channel, and the Wicked Horror TV channel, which all have video episodes of the classic era. It's available, these apps are available on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, uh, online website and across all OTT platforms as well as mobile tablet and desktop. So check them out. Um, the classic horror movie channel and the wicked horror TV channel are kind of behind. And in fact, classic sci-fi movie channel is behind a little bit, but they're all putting out episodes one a week. So they will catch up and uh, be even with us. So check the ones out they the, do have are awesome. They do. And the ones that, the movies that they have are fun too. It's fun to go through those, watch some of those old movies you don't see in other places. With me this week are my incredible co ghosts, Whitney Chiazzo, an accomplished artist, makeup artist, and writer. Whitney, how are you doing? I'm well. How's it going? Uh, it's going well. And, you know, since you weren't here last week, when I introduced Chad, I read your introduction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I called him an accomplished artist, makeup artist, and he's like, "I just let him roll with Jeff. it." That's I'm fine. Not a makeup artist, so <laughs> anyway. Whitney's taught me some stuff about makeup. Yes. So. Yeah. <laughs> also with us is Chad Hunt, co-host on Decades Before the 1970s and the 1980s. He's film producer and director with Wreak Havoc Productions and a comic book artist and writer. How are you, Chad? I'm good. I'm I'm not as accomplished as Whitney. In the makeup area of things, but I'm working on it. Working on it. If only I had time and I wasn't watching three hour movies, I could probably <laughs> be a better makeup I was, artist. I was wondering how you'd get that in there. <laughs> well, very Quiet, good. Sunny. <laughs> also, with us is Daphne, <laughs> the awesome, stupendous, and likable as hell. How you doing, Daphne? I'm doing really well. And Excellent. just like always, I've been looking forward to talking with you guys about this movie. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really excited to talk with you guys about this movie. <laughs> I am too. I am too, actually. Uh, so I am broadcasting once again from Eli's secret underground bunker. Oh, wow. Uh, parts unknown. Um, <laughs> in the background, we have skateboards and swimming lap counters and things like that. So. <laughs> Pay no attention to the <laughs> stuff in the background. Uh, on this podcast, we're going to give some basic details of the film we're covering, followed by some first impressions from each of us, and then kind of go off on there, depending on the film. It kind of changes, you know, depending on the film. So our topic this episode is Quaidon from 1964. Directed by Masaki Kobayashi, written by Yoko Mizuki, at least that's the screenplay, from uh, Lafcadio Hearn, and actually his collection of stories, quite on, and other, I think it, actually they come from several different collections. Uh, the production company, I'm not even going to try to read all of them, but it was distributed by Toho. Uh, release date. December 29th, 1964 in Japan, and July 15th, 1965 for the U.S. premiere in Mexico. 
I found this interesting. Uh, and Whitney, can you can you see I'll that see. well enough? I can't see it. Too. Okay, I think it's El Masalia. It's, it translated the, the to more, the Bahamas. The more over there, more over there. Uh, well, they translated it to the beyond, but yeah, that would yeah. More over when I ran yeah. it through okay. the translator. Yeah. I kind of like that, but yeah. yeah. In the synopsis, I'm not going to get into a detailed synopsis, but there are four distinct separate stories in this. The Black Hair, The Woman of the Snow, Uichi, The Earless, and In a Cup of Tea. Hmm. Less like a and synopsis and more of a statement of fact. That That's kind of a statement of fact, yes. Huh. Uh, like Will. It's on the side of the video box there. This film it? contains four distinct yes. separate stories. Uh, I'm I'm preparing people for what's ahead, and when we discuss each story, I will give a little better synopsis of those. So, um, I love these pictures. This this film mm -hmm. has such awesome backdrops. It's mm -hmm. just astounding. I um, uh, yeah, hand painted backgrounds the size mm -hmm. of airplane hangers. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Film, filmed in airplane hangers. Yeah. So I was trying to find a representative poster, and this is such a, uh, uh, I don't know, a film with such a high reputation that there's just so many different posters. So I found this. Don't! This kind of shows you all these different posters. That's so cool. Um, rather I than pick one. I think the one on the bottom left that has the circle with um, the colored stripes, mm -hmm. that m might be the soundtrack, oh, um, yeah. but I'm not, I'm not positive. And they could have doubled them up. Mm -hmm. um, I like the second row down on, on the far right, the girl. Yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. That's, a, that's a cool one. Yeah. I like them. Yeah. I like it a lot. I had no so, idea there were so many. They're so cool. I, I see the one of the Spanish posters close to the bottom. It's the third one. It's okay. The fourth row, third image, mm -hmm. the woman in the snow, la mujer. Oh yeah. The mm -hmm. nieve. I see that one, but I can't. Uh, I can't make out the actual image. Just the title. Right. Right. Okay. So let's. Uh, Move on from here. Also, Chad, couldn't find any taglines either. Oh. I'm sure there's lots of taglines. There was lots of quote. There were lots of <laughs> DVD boxes with quotes on them, but um, uh, that's too bad. I'm heartbroken. <laughs> so let's. Uh, and also, I kind of left off that you know, the budget was listed at 320 million yen. And the domestic box office was 20, 225 million yen, but it doesn't. Um, I couldn't find a translator. I have no idea what that equals. But they used a couple of really big studios, uh, and I and I believe that they shot on one while they prepared the other one, so that they had. Yeah. We're always shooting on something, so. Let's get into uh, first impressions. Um, and this one is Daphne's pick. So when did you first see this? And what are your impressions? Um, I th think I had seen it before, but I don't, I don't remember much of it other than um, the uh, Hoichi, the earless, the picture. Um, but uh, this is so this was essentially the first time I think I saw I've seen it um, or that I remember. <laughs> anyway. And um, I loved it. I loved every single second of the three hours. Um, I thought it was beautiful. And I thought the storytelling was amazing. And the music was amazing. Um, I've like I've watched it three times now since um, I just think it's beautiful. And oh. um yeah, I really, I really liked it. It really blew me away. Okay, okay. Uh, next up. Wait a minute. 
Did you say you watched this movie three more times? Three times total. <laughs> two times. So I guess two times after the first time. <laughs> I thought you had a day job. I. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. This has been on well, the schedule for a couple of weeks, I think, or something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I had yeah. time. <laughs> I um, I've, I started watching this six weeks ago, and I just finished watching it yesterday. Uh, <laughs> so it, it's pretty long. But <laughs> I, I'm just picking on Daphne. Uh, I just pick on Daphne, period, mm. about any, any of her picks. It's, it's just... <laughs> Um, but I liked it. I liked it a lot. I liked some of the stories in there and, um, the music was good. The sets were beautiful. It's a beautiful film, uh, to look at. Um, those sets reminded me a lot of Bride of Frankenstein, how huge and sprawling mm -hmm. some of those sets yeah. were with the running water and, mm -hmm. and, uh, the woods and, you know, when they chopped the tree down, the tree had plenty of room to fall in the one one segment. Um, so, yeah, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful movie. It really is. Um, and I, I, it was cool that it's based on folk stories and stuff like that. Um, that's the kind of stuff is cool to kind of see brought to life. Um, scary stuff like that, you know, anyway, and then to see what different cultures uh, folk tales look like, you know, that kind of stuff is, is very cool. And I, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, yeah, it, it was good. I like, there was one, there was one of, one of the stories I didn't care for too much, but, but mostly overall, I really, really liked, uh, where it went and, um, the characters were cool. The, the, the supernatural aspect of it was really, really good. Um, and I like the fact that it also, to me anyway, it didn't, you had strange things happening and usually there are morality tales where at the end somebody gets their comeuppance or, or, or this and that, but there, it wasn't like that, especially my favorite one was the snow woman or the woman of the snow. And uh, you, what you thought was going to happen at the end of that segment didn't, did not happen. And, that was very, very cool. And we'll, and we'll get into all that as we go. But yeah, I really did like it, despite what I tell Daphne. So don't tell, you guys do not tell, tell Daphne, Daphne that I like this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, earmuffs <laughs> off, Daphne. <laughs> all right. Whitney, what about you? Had you seen oh, this before? I have never seen this. I've never heard of this. And I love world folklore. I love ghost stories. Um, and especially when there's a take from somewhere in, in a different place in the map in the world. And uh, the Japanese culture has always been something unique when it comes to telling ghost stories. And mm -hmm. I will say the the middle two stories were the ones that really grabbed me the most. And we'll, I guess, yeah, we'll talk more about them. The snow woman and the, oh, I can't, I'm bad with names, but the, the um, blind Oichi, guy. The so, yeah, yeah. So, but um, no, the, it's it, it's everything that um, anyone that could want in wanting to watch something with fine details and sets and makeup on um, folklore and that kind of thing. So, yeah. <laughs> you dug it. Uh, I too really like this now, i tried to watch this once before mm. and uh i didn't I either didn't get through it or i just you know <laughs> nodded off or something and it is a little uh it, it's an absolutely stunningly beautiful film and i love the stories but you're not going to get a lot of dialogue and you're not going to get very much action although there is some in the uh the retelling of the war and the, the sea battle but uh, it's just, it's, it's incredibly beautiful. I just was uh, gobsmacked. That, that's, that's the word I want by how beautiful it was. And now I didn't watch it three hours in a row. I watched the first two stories one night. I watched the second two stories the next night. Uh, 
and because they're totally separate that it works completely mm -hmm. um and the hoichi the earless is easily the longest one it's maybe what 75 minutes something like that uh it, it's well over an hour the rest of them are not are under an hour uh but i i enjoyed the heck out of it uh and the music uh i can't wait to talk about the music there's and I, I haven't had a chance to look it up, but it reminded me of something. So let's uh, kind of go through this um, a little bit uh, story by story. So the first one was the black hair. And it was uh, the synopsis for that, or the, the Japanese name was Kirokami. The synopsis is a poor samurai who divorces his true love to marry for money, but finds the marriage disastrous and returns to his old wife only to discover something eerie about her. I don't know. Kind of an odd way to describe it, but okay. Uh, so what did, what did y'all think of that? Let's just, uh, I, I, I like this one especially the way it played out at the end. I just kept wondering what's going on here. What is playing out here? Where's the... Well, after it ended, I was still wondering what was going on there. It, it was kind of ambiguous, yeah. you know, as to mm -hmm. what, what happened. But mm -hmm. I, uh, I loved the... Um... Gosh, I love the set design in all of them. They're amazing. Again, we kind of talked about... But I loved the, the kind of the decay around everything. Um, you know, even in the beginning, you, you could tell that, um, that they were just had really in bad times. And um, I loved when he was remembering when they were having the scenes where he was remembering his wife. And it was kind of, um, I don't <laughs> Sorry, I don't know the the name of it, but where it kind of changes from one scene to another, kind of blurs in and out um, to kind of show his memory and his kind of imagining um, meeting her again. I thought that mm -hmm. was just really beautifully shot. Mm -hmm. um, I love the I love this the disjointedness of the sound G gave it such a eerie feeling. Um, yeah. And I, yeah, I have no idea what the ending was. It took me, I didn't know what's happening at first. And, you know, like, I'm not sure I know what was happening at all during the end, but um, it, I loved how he, you know, he kind of got older and sicker and wasted away at the very end. And um, yeah, it was, it was really good. <laughs> it, made, it made me wonder, was he seeing different points in time? As he got older, that's why the blanket changed color, and mm -hmm. and he and one at one time he had uh -huh. darker hair, and it, it made me feel like he was seeing points in time of the time he was gone. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's did you guys feel that way, or did was it something else you think? I didn't know what to think. I was I was a little confused <laughs> about if it was a time <laughs> thing or if he was just like Daphne was saying was like getting old and sick. But because of that look, I I definitely enjoyed the makeup. Like that mm -hmm. was oh man, that was pretty intense and Gosh, yeah. yeah, just that was the aesthetic is just amazing to me. And when he started losing his hair, and it's mm -hmm. like. Um, so I didn't it's interesting Chad I had I hadn't thought about it as time passing <clears throat> I kind of thought of it as like him him being sh just kind of shown like how it is now versus how he imagined as a way to kind of punish him or or, or yeah um, that's that's what I was something thinking like that yeah um I don't know I don't know <laughs> if he was being attacked and that was was why he was being dis decomposing or if he spent the rest of his life there kind of in this mm -hmm. crazy other place you know i i, I don't know that's i and, hadn't thought about that yeah it, that's what i felt like if mm -hmm. the black hair kept attacking kept mm -hmm. attacking him during the whole that whole sequence and it just it just felt like um yeah he was being haunted mm -hmm. during that whole time and like being forced to uh, watch the decay of the building and, and the mm -hmm. blankets turning different 
different mm-hmm. colors and being older mm-hmm. and, and, and that kind of thing. That's, that's, that's what I felt like it was. Cause even his clothes um, seem to kind of um, like get bleached, you know, like yeah, from time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I don't know. That, that was really interesting. It was a weird, it was a weird ending, but mm-hmm. it was a cool ending at least. Yeah. I, I, I thought he was, you know, that in a way he was sort of like enchanted when he got there mm-hmm. and saw everything the way it had been exactly as he left. Mm-hmm. And she's happily on the spinning wheel or, mm-hmm. or uh, and uh, the same red dress or fabric is hanging there and mm-hmm. everything is exactly the same. And he, he just marvels over how she looks the same as she did. And they have this nice time together and have this discussion. And then when he wakes up, he's next to a rotting corpse. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, the building is like in a total shambles and falling down and there's holes. And I like the sound too, Daphne. I was noticing, it reminded me a little bit of M in that you didn't get all the sound. Mm-hmm. He's crashing all through this building and, and most of it you didn't hear. But every once in a while, there'd be a big crash mm-hmm. boom, you know, when busted through a wall. So I thought that was kind of cool too. It was sort of a a, kind of a surreal dreamlike type experience, but yeah. And I composer definitely used silence Mm. as part of the, uh, the noise. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a really haunting image. Mm -hmm. He could use a corn cob. (laughs) Oh my God. That, that, uh, (laughs) the one thing I didn't get at all was the black hair. I just, I didn't Mm -hmm. get that. I mean, well, I think he was, I think he was obsessed with the, her black hair. Mm-hmm. He was always r- rubbing her hair and messing with her hair a lot. Oh, so okay. I, I thought mm-hmm. maybe that was just that maybe that's what was haunting him or that was the representation of her spirit or her ghost. Mm-hmm. Okay. I really loved the, um, well, I mean, color is throughout this movie. So it, it's, I'm sure I'll mention it again but um i love the color of um her that purple that she was wearing his new wife Mm -hmm. and i just loved how um the noise that all the fabric made when they um when they would walk around and the silence that was um going on you know there was no other sound or any ambient noise you could really hear hear that you could hear their um clothes on the floor or um the swishing noises when they walked and i don't know maybe it's i, I just really enjoyed that too yeah, yeah and and the 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 scenery was beautiful i thought it was cool how he um so clearly had sets you know to kind of give it this um kind of you know fan- fantastical unreal background but then there was some na- nature scenes like when they were getting water when they were in this move in in uh in this story when they were traveling to his new post and they were by a river and he was collecting water. And it was just kind of interesting the times that it, it um, had natural, natural scenes. And then all Mm -hmm. the rest of the time it was this, this fantasy um, scene. So. Yeah. One of the things I was thinking about this and I have, I have no idea because I don't know that much about this, but my perception of, Japanese ceremonies, like even like a tea ceremony, is they're very slowly paced and very deliberate. And you spend time appreciating everything. And I felt like that's the way the stories in this movie were told. Mm -hmm. Very deliberate, very slow paced, very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, that's, that was sort of my take here for for these and then the music kind of plays into that too with, mm-hmm. with some of it and then the clothes the thing that got me about the their clothes was they seemed i don't know what they were made of but on one hand they seemed very flowing but on the other hand they like held their shape yep mm-hmm. very strangely and then the women it it really i'd never noticed this before but i felt like the way the women moved was dictated by their clothes mm-hmm. like if they were on their knees like the, there's one scene where she's on her knees and then she moves a little bit to the side mm-hmm. and the way she did it was specifically to keep her clothes oriented hmm. kind mm-hmm. of the same way. And then when they would stand up, 
you know, it would be kind of this crouched over and lift one knee up and then stand up and while everything, you know, the, the, the clothes around or the, the skirt around her knees or whatever you would call it kind of maintain the same shape and mm -hmm. look, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I'm not sure if I'm explaining this right, but it just amazes me in those mm -hmm. hats. What's with that? There's a hat in there somewhere where they, and I just saw this, was that on, uh, it might even have been on yokai <laughs> it had one of them really tall oh yeah hats. it was yokai they were they i'm like how do those how's that stay on is that <laughs> pinned on or something is it super yeah. light and, yeah i don't know how it stays on that's for or... sure it symbolizes um i think it symbolizes like uh, not military rank but kind of your place in society mm -hmm. that's how i took it um took it anyway that i thought those were cool mm-hmm they look All like right. wind, wind socks. They were if, uh, pretty amazing. Yes. <laughs> well, they look cool. You know, it's weird. Yeah. It's, from a certain <laughs> angle, they look kind of silly. But I thought if you if you were looking straight on at yourself, I don't know what you would think. But if you mm -hmm. turned sideways a little bit, it looked it looked cool. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Like, and you could see through them. They're all, mm -hmm. almost like a yeah. mesh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would really like to have touched that, those fa that fabric, those fabrics, just to see what they felt like. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they kind of, they, yeah. <laughs> they look like it's very specific. They had to like, I don't know, like they'd have to like blouse them out and get everything mm -hmm. just in place. And then when you walk, they kind of held that mm -hmm. shape almost, mm -hmm. it seemed. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Talking about the costumes, I, um, I watched an interview with Kobayashi and he said that he, um, for for basically for the costumes and the design he just came up with color schemes and color t and like tones and then he provided that to the the people that you know that the specialists the technicians that specialize that and kind of let them go um he trusted their t their talent i guess and then um they would go over it and you know he would make changes um, here or there, but he said in this interview that that's usually he works a lot with the costuming, but with this he, the costuming he basically just incorporated by coming up with with colors that he was going to use, mm -hmm. and kind of creating, um, you know, like uh, pages with the color that he liked and the fabrics and stuff like that, and then they would go with it and build built the sets and the costumes around it which i thought was really cool i think yeah. this was his first um this was his first color movie and he really took oh. that um as part of you know his his creation mm -hmm. that was really neat oh he does a fantastic job with it uh the uh second story uh yuki ona or the woman of the snow uh, is about there's a pair of woodcutters who are stranded in a snowstorm and uh, they meet an icy spirit in the form of a woman who kills one of them but then spares the life of the younger one on the condition that he never tells anyone about her because he was and, so cute and handsome yeah well and a decade later he forgets <laughs> his promise oh no it's always the same uh Anyway, there was a, and I, I didn't find exactly the one I wanted, but I loved where the two guys are traipsing through the snow and they find that, you see that, uh, whoever's hut that was, mm -hmm. that they go and stay in. It mm -hmm. just was awesome. And mm -hmm. I know this is on a set, but it just looks incredible. All these yeah, it's yeah, beautiful. It yeah. I think that was the fairy uh the ferry drivers or yes whatever is yes. where he stayed yeah oh i know that set was beautiful it was so i mean i feel like you could you could feel the cold and the mm -hmm. emptiness um yeah that was beautiful so uh and then I, and again i don't have a, a bunch of shots there but i think this was from that too mm -hmm. yeah and mm -hmm. The stuff in the background on the backdrops just look, I mean, it, the one there looks everything like an eye, but it didn't, mm -hmm. I, um, I, I, I just thought it was interesting. Really cool. Mm -hmm. looking. I, th I think they are supposed to be her, like her watching, watching mm -hmm. them. Yeah. She'll mm -hmm. always be able to keep an eye on them. Mm -hmm. And I like how they were, you know, 
you could definitely see eyes, but they were also really stylized. So mm -hmm. um, it wasn't just like, you know, these eyes in the sky. Um, I, I really like that aspect of it too. Yeah. And I well, love how pretty... like here it's, it's blue, you know, it's like blue and white. Um, it's just, it's lovely. Um, it, it turns out that when uh, he gets home, then he lives with his mother and uh, a woman named Yuki comes by. <laughs> who's on her way to be a lady in waiting mm -hmm. for some court and they invite her to stay there and the mother likes her and she hangs around and uh, they fall in love and they have, they get married and they have three kids, right? It's kind of a happily ever after yeah. almost happy life. And he is like uh, apparently an expert sandal maker <laughs> and he makes, sandals for the three kids and makes a pair of special sandals for her. And somehow or another that sets him into these memories. And he tells her about this night long ago. And that's when she kind of loses it and she doesn't really lose it, but it's like, he's, he's thinking she looks familiar and finally yeah. it's, it's obvious that, yeah, that is the same person. Mm -hmm. um, and that he has betrayed her because he told the story and uh, she doesn't kill him, but tells him he must take care of the three kids or she will come back and kill him, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, and then there's a neat little touch at the end where he sets the sandals outside and the next day they're gone. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So she took the sandals. This was, this was a great... Great segment. I, I really like this one a lot. It, mm -hmm. It's a more of a traditional ghost story type thing or, you know, and um, heartbreaking at the mm -hmm. end. You know, um, mm -hmm. I got the feeling she did not. She, she was no longer she no longer had any malice toward him. Mm -hmm. um, I think because of the, they were like a family now or whatever. And um and her taking the shoes kind of proved that a little bit, I think. But um, yeah, it was just it was just great. And it was kind of heartbreaking at the because he realized at, at the end, you know, what he'd done. What he'd yeah, done. what he'd thrown away. Yeah, and um, you know, it's not like one of those things where somebody tells you a secret and says, "All right, now don't tell anybody," and you go, "Don't worry, I won't tell anybody." And you get home mm -hmm. and you tell your wife or girlfriend, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. But um, but yeah, it was a it was good. I, I like this one a lot. I did Anybody too. Else? Yeah, yeah, I did too. I, I mean, it was beautiful. Um, it was totally, absolutely beautiful. And I feel like um, I I don't know if I was imagining it, but I've kind of when when she was out in the snow with him, and um, she was also very cold and. Um, really light, like, like cold skin, like her skin was what didn't have any blood pumping through it or whatever. But like in the house, the colors of the hut that they lived in and the house, it was more kind of natural colors, a little bit warmer. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I kind of felt like Yoki was also warm and kind and um, that they're really, you, you, there was a sharp change between how she looked and acted <laughs> Um, when she was of, you know, it's a regular human versus when she was the woman in the snow, mm -hmm. both in her, how she looked and how she acted. And I kind of felt like, I understand that he betrayed her, but I kind of also felt like, um, a little sorry for him because I, I feel like he, he was just telling his partner about this thing that happened right. and, um, and she was so upset about it and um and he just didn't get that mm -hmm. that she is how upset she was and um i don't know it, just, it it was just it made me think a lot about um just their 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 interactions a little bit and i guess maybe it was because i was kind of sucked into the fact that they loved each other but she really was a character that was she was a woman of the snow no matter what mm -hmm. she was um to him in reality if that makes any sense yeah but, it does. Um, I kind of liked that it, it, uh, it just surprised me and it wasn't like it, an ending that you would expect it to be. You'd think that they would fall in love and, and they'd make it work out, you know, like 
Beauty and the Beast or something, but um, kind of. But anyway, I, I, I liked that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, what I liked um, when you mentioned like there were some colors and tones and some warmness to certain places, but especially when um, time went on and then the people in the surrounding area like those those ladies they had even noticed something strange about her and they commented about her her youth or why she looks mm -hmm. young and vibrant and uh, it's just like snarky comments about that kind of thing like oh well you have like what three children or after having children mm -hmm. oh yeah that, that kind mm -hmm. of thing and and she did look like she had color and she had a youthful mm -hmm. look to her um and seeing that part of the story i i I really enjoyed seeing outsiders uh, with their mm -hmm. uh, insights mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wasn't, I, I like that you said it was snarky because I was kind of watching that interaction going, you know, are they saying nice things or are they <laughs> like doing backhand yeah. comments? Yeah, that's basically you know, it. Yeah. That kind of compliment kind of a thing. And which, you know, you can totally imagine it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yeah. know, ma imagine that stuff in, in your neighborhood, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, but and uh, this is another example of how awesome you brought up those eyes in the background, but like the, the summary, the yellows and the oranges mm -hmm. when they're running through the fields. Yes. Um, and I was not expecting to see nudity. You know, I felt like that was a really intimate, intimate section there when you see that they're actually, uh, you know, romantically, you know, mm -hmm. it, I just, I, I thought that was really powerful too, that it, it was so there and you're kind of, I don't yeah. know how the right word is, but it was just so tangible, you know? Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I liked that too. That kind of threw me off, threw me off a little bit. And then I liked it. This is this is the only segment where the music was I couldn't take that shrill string, mm. Mm. you know. It was a little I was, dying, I was drinking some coke mm. and my glass broke. The cat <laughs> ran off screaming and oh boy, <laughs> it was uh, a <laughs> it was hard to listen to. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. <laughs> okay, I, okay, I won't. <laughs> I'll take it back. But I'm just yeah, trying no. to remember what the music was in that, in that, uh, specifically in that move, that section. So, so. Usually, when it was show her, it was usually like when uh, she was on on screen. The rest of the music was was fine, but they were, you'd have these very sharp, discordant mm -hmm. string, mm -hmm. you know, string mm -hmm. string hits, okay, and, yeah. uh, and it was just like. It was kind of mm -hmm. like her. Yeah. It was kind of like her That's theme a, a little yeah. bit, yeah. or yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But anyway, enough about me. Well, let's. Uh, we ready to move on to uh, Hoichi? <laughs> Hoichi the earless. Um, but this is. <laughs> I grew up. Uh, I grew up with that guy. Ed, yeah. <laughs> Mimi, Mimi Nashi, Hoichi no Hanashi. And I, I tried to run that through a translator and I did get, I, I, one of the things I came up with was story of Hoichi without ear. So Hoichi the earless works very well. Hoichi is a blind musician living in a monastery who sings so well that a ghostly imperial court commands him to perform the epic ballad of their death battle for them. But the ghosts are draining away his life, and the monks set out to protect him by writing a holy mantra over his body to make him invisible to the ghosts. But they've forgotten something. <laughs> this was actually, this was my favorite <laughs> for a lot of reasons. Um, it is much longer than the other ones, but to start with, we get this whole story of this battle, the tale of the Haiki and the battle of Dano. Yura, I think. <clears throat> that's um, that's close enough. Genpai horror mm -hmm. war. So uh they these I, periodically so th they're sort of telling the tale of this and showing these uh surrealistic visions of what the war was like, and part of the time they're zeroing in on these big uh I, I don't know what you call them, murals or mm -hmm. I just thought they were awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh and so that's an example of one. Yeah. Um, 
and then this was the uh, the infant emperor of mm -hmm. the Haiki who were like destroyed, mm -hmm. and they were the ones that are the ghost um, court, yeah. kind of. And then, boy, the, the shots in the battle just were mm -hmm. crazy. They had these, you know, boats and. Uh, it was beautiful. It was amazing. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it's hard to find something that's uh, that really depicts it mm -hmm. well. And then once the the battle is over and the Heike are destroyed, now we have this is sort of their ghostly court, right? And mm -hmm. I think that's Hoichi there. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this guy, let's see if I got the right one here. That guy comes and gets Hoichi to go off and play for the court. And Hoichi's blind, so he doesn't know he's he's playing for a a room full of ghosts, right? In a I just thought that mm -hmm. I don't know. That stuff is incredible. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, the costume so back is up, amazing. Back yes. up to the court and the backdrop and the uh and then I don't even, I can't remember what was going on here, but oh Lord, was it beautiful. These, mm -hmm. yes. I think we're mm -hmm. trying to show some, maybe some symbolic of blood drenched or something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that those may have been, um, I'm trying to remember if those were like the war banners or something, um, you know, in the, oh, that's in, the when they, during the battle. That would make sense. The red eyes. Um, and that's, the, that's the, the warrior and that's, mm -hmm. uh, Hoichi, as he's taking him, I think he goes through those doors at some point then. Mm -hmm. And then uh, here's Hoichi after they've tried to protect him with painting their mantra all over his entire body, every spare mm -hmm. inch. Although there are some obvious glaring exceptions in this picture that I didn't notice, which I should have noticed <laughs> considering the title. <laughs> So when the ghost comes, he can't see him, except his ears. That's very strange. It's mm -hmm. cool. I, mm -hmm. I really liked all that calligraphy they're doing over his entire mm -hmm. body so carefully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's just doors. a beautiful image. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just, I, I love God. that whole telling of the tale. And then they want mm -hmm. him to come and perform this music that tells the tale and it has so many different parts. You can't do it all at once. So he has mm -hmm. to keep going back. And that was the music that this is, I know this will sound weird, but I swear I felt I could hear some um, tinges of like Mississippi Delta blues in there. Like on oh, when really you play old slide, the twangy slide guitars yeah. mm -hmm. like R.L. Burnside or Junior Kimbrough or somebody like that. I was going to go looking for the song I was thinking of, but I, I didn't have a chance to. But I picked up on that too. It, it sounded a little bluesy for for that situation. Yeah, I love the music. I absolutely love the music in that segment. It just put me in a trance almost. Um, I think uh, when I was researching it, the person who's actually playing that music is a very well-known Biwa performer who, who, um, whose technique and style um, is unique. So um, the plucking and the use of the, the, the piece yeah. for plucking um, mm -hmm. and how I, I think the person, it, well, but sometimes slam the body of the Biwa with the, Thing for plucking and stuff, but I think that um, I think it was in the commentary uh, talking about the musician, that a very unique style. So so maybe it's a little, you know, different than maybe there's a little different uh, spin to it than maybe the traditional um, mm -hmm. playing. And I'm not I'm not sure, but I know that the musician was was very well known. Um, yeah, and the, and the name is Kenji Tsuruda. Tsuruda. Mm -hmm. but, whether I pronounce that right or not. Mm -hmm. But it was, I thought it was very cool. Yeah. Not um, it too. And, and that whole telling of the tale of the, that, that mm -hmm. stuff just sucked me in so totally. much and yeah. set yeah. the stage to where you knew, I knew what was going on when they came in. Wait mm -hmm. a minute. 
didn't it? Isn't that the guy that got killed? He's coming mm -hmm. to summon him. And so. Well, and I also was blown away with how, you know, you hear the story in the beginning, so you know the story, but yet you hear it again. And now that you know the story a little bit and you see how the ghosts are reacting, you kind of understand what they're, um, why they're changing kind of the emotions that they're going through as they hear the story progress. Mm -hmm. And so even though we're hearing this story twice, I, I didn't mind hearing it twice. I just, it didn't seem like a repeat. It felt mm -hmm. like, okay, now yeah. I understand what's yeah. happening and yeah. I can feel why this is such a, an intense scene while they're getting so pulled into the story. And it's, um, you know, it's really an important story. And I, it's just, yeah, I was so uh, sucked into that whole, everything about it, it was beautiful. It was well, and then and then, you know the the. So I don't know. He still ends up playing and doing this thing, even though mm -hmm. he's now deaf and blind, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for the for uh, what a rich person comes by and has heard about his right. prowess at the end, and and he becomes a rich man. Is kind of the way the story ends. Yeah, and they're not sure if it's ghosts that are coming to see them or actually to see him perform or if it's real people. Um, I got that impression that they weren't always sure with who was coming, um, which I thought was cool too. I um, definitely, like we, we've talked about the sets throughout this whole entire anthology, but especially when um, he's performing and then the other monks come to find him. I think that was something that I yeah. really enjoyed seeing how misty and everything had mm -hmm. looked um, and the, yeah. uh, the fire flaring and, and all of mm -hmm. that. Was... Yeah. When we, when we, when he's performing, we see this, mm -hmm. but then when the other monks come to sort of rescue him or take yes. him back, uh, then you see what it really is. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Right. And I loved how when they're pulling him away and it was transitioning to the rocks yeah. and how you're talking about the, the fog and how it kind of got sucked back in, you know, out of reality. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And they're like, dude, you've been playing in a graveyard. Right. <laughs> they don't see any of this other stuff. No. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I really enjoyed was you, mm -hmm. the, you know, his, his world, his mind or whatever that is. And, with the spirit realm, but then the reality of what they're mm -hmm. seeing in this foggy, um, eerie mm -hmm. uh, reality. <laughs> but I think it was in here too, where it struck me that we've talked about this in other movies where it's almost like every shot set up is like a painting almost, you know, this like they, definitely they created this incredible mm -hmm. artistic, um, you know, shot construction and then play the scene in there. And it's just, it's just mm -hmm. beautiful. And it's so, um, I, I feel like we, we've mm -hmm. talked about this and other stuff too, um, how everybody, every part of this movie is, is beautiful. It's the direction, the acting, the set design, the sound. Yeah. Um, it's all, each of it, so each part is perfect. And then together, mm -hmm. um, they are so they work so well together um yeah and i love that the guy from um seven samurai i i just squealed almost when i saw him <laughs> when i saw that he was the monk the, I was like, yeah. oh my god it's <laughs> he's like the head monk right yeah. That, yeah 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 i think where's Hoichi? well we don't know where he is we think he's sleeping <laughs> Anyway. Like Chad was talking about a heartbreaking moment in um, the, the woman in the snow and that story. And the, uh, the one that really got me was it, the after of what happened to Hoichi or how bad with things, but oh. like he's lying there after all, go, having his ears being ripped off and then mm -hmm. the blood and then he's and then having the bandages and all of that. You see mm -hmm. him like suffering like that. That I'm like, oh. This poor guy, mm -hmm. he's, he's been through some stuff and mm -hmm. that that got me a little mm -hmm. bit. Like yeah. He, he yeah. couldn't help what he had to in, in, endure, you know. It's, mm -hmm. Exactly. He was totally innocent. Right. He didn't do, yes. there was anything, he didn't do it and he deserved it at all. Anything right. that happened. Yeah. 
And I thought it was cool too, um, you know, how we talked a little bit about how the sound was, you know, sometimes it was a natural environment, sometimes it was silent, sometimes it mm -hmm. was these kind of unsettling noises. But when it, he's like, it was so violent how he was his he was getting thrown around with yes. while the ghost was holding his ears, and the noises um, were just really strange and it just added to this crazy thing that was happening. Like added to the actual violence. Yeah. Um. And then after, but then slowly uh, after mm. the ghost was then it kind of had this natural sound again that you could see you could hear him kind of moaning a little bit mm -hmm. and and breathing and um. I just I just felt like it was a nice transition between this this scene where he's interacting with the ghost and then afterwards coming also again back into like reality. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was so that was so harsh what happened to it him. It was, it was. <laughs> well, and, and Hoichi's yeah. just trying to do the right thing. He's trying to uh -huh. help the people out that come and summon yes. him. Mm -hmm. And then the monks are like, oh, you know, these people are sapping your life. Right. Put mm -hmm. this all on you. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the monks are like, oops. I forgot I the know. ears. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe you forgot the ears. Come on. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a... But that's that. I think that story is my, is, is definitely my favorite one. And it, it mm -hmm. it's, because he is so innocent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay. And I, I also kind of like how in the beginning he's, he's, I don't want to say he's meek, but he just, he just kind of does his thing. But after he has his ears removed, I feel like he really steps into that role. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and him as him as a character you know like he just kind of he has this confident a little bit more confidence and like he just accepts that this is what he does and right. what he's good at and he 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 goes and he goes and does it mm, yeah. I, I, I feel like i and saw the, him grow a little bit maybe or something i don't yeah. know yeah yeah well yeah. the war was real this whole story the real life war was happened in the late uh 12th century like 1180 to 1185 so mm -hmm. They really did have this battle between these two mm -hmm. uh, factions over who was in control, kind of a civil war almost at the time. Um, so that was, I, I love that stuff. Yeah. And just to keep yakking on um, the, uh, <laughs> I loved how um, people just talked about go the ghosts and stuff. I guess just part of, part of life, you know, like, when they when the when the body showed up um washed up on shore it was like is it a goat you know is it from the ghost ship um oh yeah i saw some willow wisps last night i think you know something's up and you know the monks were like totally oh yeah it's a ghost this is happening you know and then in the other two stories it was like that too it's just part of part of life that's what i really uh, very quickly i'm going to say that's what i really like about uh the mirror of what like Japanese culture have in common with like um, a lot of Mexican and um, South American culture mm -hmm. is that death and that spirit world is very much um, part of life. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of people b that believe in that in both cultures, most especially Japanese people. They're, mm -hmm. it, they're so, they, they embrace that. And it's nice to see that in this anthology. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I really, I really dug that. It's such, so, you know, what is it? Um, magical realism or, mm. or, or whatever that I'm finding. I'm really, I really like, I like that a lot. Mm. Well, the, the last story, Chawan Nonaka in a cup of tea. A writer tells the story of a man who keeps seeing a mysterious face reflected in his cup of tea. And there's of course a lot more to it than that. Um, actually in, in reading a bigger description, apparently this face shows up in his tea and he goes ahead and drinks the tea anyway. So somehow he's, is he swallowing that guy's soul? That's how something? I took it. Yeah. Uh, but then he's, I, but <laughs> <laughs> this is the one that I got. I got no idea what was happening. Although I, I see where it ends. <laughs> It ends like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's his problem? <laughs> that's that's him. Oh boy. The author, right? The author. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The writer. Um, yeah. Yeah. And these guys, they didn't play sure. fair at all. No, no they didn't. <laughs> But I think I thought of this right away when you were talking about um, the director setting up the colors. Mm -hmm. You know, that's. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so he drinks his tea. He keeps seeing this guy's face reflected in the tea. And at first he freaks out and throws drops at stuff. And finally, at some point, he drinks it. And then these other three guys come for him. And he has a battle with them. And I think he wins. Well, they said they were there, they were there to tell him that uh, their master or whatever was coming back to take his revenge mm -hmm. on him for drinking yeah. his soul, I guess. Um, yeah. So, is it is it this and, the one too where he runs around and yells at everybody, intruder, intruder, and they all come running and then they they get mad at him and make fun of him because they mm -hmm. say, ah, there's so. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was a, it felt so different from the others other mm -hmm. stories it was yeah I, I don't want to say I didn't like it I think it was probably my least favorite but I don't know if it's because it was so different or and maybe that was the point of it kind of not having an ending you know I'm not the sure other, the other ones had sort of a theme of of like love mm -hmm. you know, in them in some form or another Hoichi loved his playing and, and right and the relationship mm -hmm. between the woman in the snow and, and mm -hmm. the man there. And mm -hmm. they all had that kind of yeah. theme going through. Mm -hmm. This didn't, that the last one didn't seem to have that. It was just mm -hmm. telling us sort of a straight ahead mm -hmm. fable or, or story about swallowing people's souls in cups mm -hmm. of tea. Don't mm -hmm. do that, everybody. If you see a face, yeah. floating see in a, your tea. See a face, <laughs> flush it down the toilet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Use a corn cob on it. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody else knows about the discussion we had about outhouses before the, we started recording. Two um, plus two equals They four. do now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know what? We have, I haven't listed very many of the actors' names, but they're because there's so many of them. You know, there's, uh, and I wouldn't know. Um, Katsuo Nakamura plays Hoichi. Tetsuro Tanba is the warrior, and Takashi Shimura is the head priest in Hoichi. The earless Tatsu Tatsuya Naka, Nakadai plays Minokichi, the the uh, woodcutter in The Woman of Snow, and Kaiko Kishi is Yukiona. Uh, what else? The black hair is. Michio Aratama is the first wife, and Misako Watanabe is his second wife, and Rentaro Makuni is the husband. And we get down to the cup of tea. Who's the madam? The author narrator is Osama Takazawa. Nakamura Ganjiro II is the publisher. And uh, the guy whose face is in the tea is Noburo Nakaya, Noburo Nakaya. I don't know. Anyway. Sounds right. Lots of, uh, it, it's, it's such an impressive film just in terms of the feel and the sound and the look of it. And if you have patience enough with the, with the pacing, I think uh, it's almost hypnotic. Right. Yeah, at least for me. Mm -hmm. But you're right that because each one is its own kind of story, you could take a break and yeah, and come back and or you know watch one at a time. I wish yeah, I'd have thought of that idea. <laughs> it's like it's three hours and three minutes long, and I know the first two ended at like an hour and twenty three minutes, and then. Uh, Hoichi is like an hour and 15 minutes at least. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is maybe only 20 minutes, 25 minutes, something like that, the cup of tea. Uh, the first two are roughly about the same, 40 to 50 minutes. But uh, yeah, you, you definitely can do that. 
Um, I felt like Hoichi the Earless like deserved a standalone, not just with this anthology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. I guess that's that's my bias because I think that's like yeah my my mm -hmm. first favorite next to the woman. We've done lots of seventy five minute <laughs> movies, haven't mm -hmm. we? Mm -hmm. Well, in that interview, I was telling you guys about uh, with the director Kobayashi um, when he submitted it to Khan, um, he he they had a rule about it couldn't be more than two hours mm -hmm. and so he um edited it to i think it was like 160 minutes 160 minutes or something and they still wouldn't do it so he took out um the woman of the snow and oh, okay. just had those oh. um yeah and and then i think i read that sometimes sometimes they did show toichi but i'm not positive by itself but so oh, wow. the print that was um out for folks to see the hundred and again i don't know quote me 160 that was um, how it was for a while okay yeah. and that's why the 180 the three hour one is um they had to find the original print it was in to it was like in storage in toho they couldn't find it and then they had a um Re, yeah, digital re you know restore it um oh, okay well but, uh, that that's explains. why it's such a big deal that it's it's yeah uh, so it, it yeah. when it was released in the u.s they took out the woman in the snow and also okay they did yeah got some other stuff and got mm -hmm. it down to 125 minutes mm -hmm. yeah oh boy so and then the 161 minute version with all four yeah. stories mm -hmm. is actually is the one that was in the original Criterion version. Mm -hmm. And then later Criterion versions had the full yeah. three hours. So that matches everything that you're mm -hmm. saying that they didn't, you know, for a while they didn't have it. Yeah. And I um, guess um, if you can see the interview, I think it was an assistant director or um, he, uh, he talks a lot about um, that and that, um, Kobayashi, they had found, they had gotten the 161 minute print and restored it. And Kobayashi saw that before he died, but he never had a chance to see um, oh. the actual, oh. the 181. They, they found it and then restored it. And there was some damage. They had to like, you know, I don't know anything about film restoration, but um, so he unfortunately wasn't able to see that um, restored print. But I thought that was fascinating and yeah. you know i i'm just am curious as to you know why he would which story he would it was why choose this story you know out versus the other was it purely time mm -hmm. you know it's just yeah. really wow. really interesting maybe because there wasn't the ghost was too kind and the woman of the snow i don't know <laughs> it didn't have any repercussions um yeah maybe it just yeah, totally and, had to do with time i don't know you know like maybe he had to get it down into that time period and that was the least i don't know yeah well i saw something where it said that the originally each of the stories was supposed to represent a season mm -hmm. but then here's something else that said uh um the months in order are september december March and then February. Hmm. December, December, March. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. It, it's not a real obvious time frame in the mm -hmm. in the uh, cup of tea in a cup of tea. I don't think. I could see it being spring for Koichi or Hoichi the earless. Earless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Koichi. When I, well, never mind. Um, it was the uh, official submission of Japan for the best foreign language film in the Academy Awards in 1966. And it won the special jury prize at the 1965 Cannes Film Festival. Cannes Film Festival. If this is the restored footage and all, it it's beautiful. I mean, it, whoever yeah. Yeah. digitized it or and redid mm -hmm. all that did a very good job on it because it is crystal clear. I know well, it's was, amazing, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. it's yeah. This is awesome. I enjoyed this. Thanks for doing this because I know I tried to watch this before Daphne and just got, you know, I had to be. To me, this is like almost like a silent film. You have to be yeah. in that mode. You know. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. 
Let me state very clearly, there's no way I would ever, ever watch this if it wasn't for this podcast. <laughs> well, it was I've had we've had the the collection we've had the movie the dvd um for a while and so this was I'm wanting to watch it and so i was like yeah we can watch it, it good was, yeah you know. well that's a cool like i say I always say and we always say it, it's a cool to watch movies you maybe never would have seen before yeah. Yeah. and uh so yeah yay i liked it, it. Yay. all right check it out folks i'm sure most people most horror fans have heard of this and if you haven't heard of it check it out and be ready for the uh don't do what american audiences first did the the general perception was they didn't like it because it wasn't like godzilla <laughs> um <laughs> okay <laughs> well i did get excited when it said Toho Studios at the yeah. beginning. I went, yeah. Uh, and then I went, uh, oh, yeah, this is quiet. That's the three hours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, three hours. Okay, we do have some feedback. Um, and let's see here. I'll do yokai. I love yokai monsters. Speak okay. Warfare. Jeremiah the Pisces. This looks insane. Yep. <laughs> I think this is one of those ones a lot of people haven't seen. Like I saw a lot of comments <laughs> about the seventies movie Mumsy Nanny, Sunny and Girly. It was like, I never heard of this, you know. Uh and I think this one, uh Yokai might be another one that a lot of people missed. See it, people. It is so ooh, it's so sweet and good. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I'm talking about Mumsy, of course. No, spook, <laughs> spook's warfare. <laughs> Okay, monsters. Um, so Jeremiah the Pisces. This looks like insane. It is. Um, and then Ralph Miller, awesome Ralph Miller, bonkers movie. Just when you thought you'd seen everything, here comes a parasol creature. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> With a huge tongue yeah. <laughs> and one leg. All right. Let's see. That's it for feedback today. But we do a new episode every two weeks, focusing on a film between 1920 and 1969. Next up, chosen by Whitney. What did you pick for us, Whitney? Those monks, two monks, another ghost story. Hmm. 1934. From 1934. Cool. That I'm what's, so excited about this. What's the running time? Not three hours. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> And are there any characters named Mumsy? <laughs> I don't or know. Nanny. Mm, I don't think so. No. If so, this, I'm out. I'm out. I'm... You're feeling sick. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Great pick. You know, we're on a string of, uh, I don't know if I want to call them foreign films or not, but you go back to Macario, mm -hmm. which is Mexican. Followed by, I don't remember what my pick was, but then Valley of the Guanji, which was made in Spain. <laughs> and then Yokai. No, su no, no subtitles. Oh, my pick yeah. was Yokai. That's Japanese. In quite in yeah. Japanese. And now back to Mexico <laughs> again. This is awesome. I love it. Um, I totally yeah, ignored fun. what you said, Chad. What did you just say? <laughs> I said in no subtitles in Guanji. Does the two monks have... Uh... <laughs> Is it in yes. Spanish language? Yes, but there's something. God, I hate reading. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. If, I wa if he wanted to read, why would he be watching movies? Be I know. <laughs> All right. I can't do two things at once. I'm reading and then something happens. I got to rewind it again to figure out what did he, what did he do? What did he do? Uh, what did he just say? It is. <laughs> I almost always have to watch uh, subtitled movies twice because I miss stuff when I'm reading. Yeah, me um, too. The visuals. I love looking at the visuals. Mm -hmm. But that's actually probably a good thing. Right, Chad? Huh? Um, you really want me to answer that? <laughs> no. I just got finished <laughs> saying I can't do two things at, at one time. Yeah, I can't either. I'm, I'm not, not a good multitasker. Reading, as shown by <laughs> the stuff I do on this podcast. All right, 
Uh, there's plenty of ways to stay in touch. Please send feedback to feedback at gruesomemagazine.com or leave comments on Gruesome Magazine's YouTube channel uh, or Gruesome Magazine's HNR DOH Facebook group uh, or even on the website. Um, also, you know, we do have a Patreon account if you want to join that, contribute a little bit. I mean, uh, Gruesome Magazine puts out tons of podcasts every week, and I'm sure. There's something there for you besides decades of horror. There's modern movies, both theatrical and streaming. And Heroes and Droids, which covers... uh, um, Star Wars, sci-fi, James Bond, superheroes. Sword, sorcery, sci-fi, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and and a lot of stuff on... Plus, I'm on it. And Chad's on it, too. I don't have a day job. He's on all of them. He's on everything. Anyway, that'll soon change if this subtitle crap keeps up. <laughs> Catch us again here in two weeks <laughs> for another great horror movie of the classic era as only decades of horror can do it. Say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. Oh, everybody. <laughs>